Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You're about to see the most legendary interview of all time. This is my favorite interview regarding juicing that I have ever done. We have the epic icon legend Joe Cross in the house and he is world renowned from the movie Fat Sick and Nearly Dead. He had a huge transformation and fixed all of his health problems on 60 days of juicing and documented that. And in this interview, he shared so many aha moments that literally gave me goosebumps and so many tips on how to stay on a juice cleanse, how to find self-love, and he just literally blew me away. So this is a good one. And I don't think many people out there realize that Joe is actually one of the creators of the Nama Juicer. And this is my new favorite juicer. I just started using this about a month ago and it is the best juicer I have ever used in my entire life. I teamed up with them. They are having the biggest sale of the year on right now. So I had to let you guys know it is $80 off for Black Friday for a Nama juicer. So this is only on for a couple of days. Go follow the link below and grab your juicer. You will not regret it. I get so much more juice out of my produce with this juicer and less pulp, the juice is smoother, and the juice doesn't settle like other juicers, and it literally tastes better. It's like nothing else I've ever used. So go pick it up today. Nama is the best of the best. And watch this video right through to the end. It'll give you goosebumps too, I promise. It is so good. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Jillian Barry, and I'm so excited. Today we have an amazing guest for you guys. We have Joe Cross. He became world famous when he did the documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. He did a juice cleanse for 60 days, documented this, totally changed his life and fixed all of his health problems. And since then, he's made a huge name for himself in the juicing world. He's also part creator of the Nama Juicer, which I just made this amazing juice with. And he's an overall great guy. This is going to be a great interview. You guys are going to want to stick around to the end and let's get right into it. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Hey, Julian. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here with you today and life is going great. Yeah, so great to have you on, a fellow juicer. So we have a big juice community on this channel. And I would love to start out with sort of uh, your story for anybody who might not know. So maybe a summary of what initially inspired you to start that 60-day juice cleanse and maybe even what inspired you to start documenting it and do the documentary as well. Yeah, well, I, I guess my story, Julian, is pretty much um, the story of many, many people out there where sort of life happens and life takes over and you're kind of not really in charge of the show you know you get pulled and dragged and thrown here pushed there and things happen and you don't really put yourself first and I found that the things that I was um was a slave to was my work some relationships that were not great not healthy and I had problems with with, you know, I wouldn't say I have a problem with alcohol, but I would say that alcohol negatively impacted my life. I, mm -hmm. it, I think if you use the word, you had a problem with alcohol, it means that you were an alcoholic. I wasn't that, but alcohol, I would, I would go out and, you know, maybe not have a drink for two weeks and then go and have a huge drink. And then I'd feel depressed and lousy on the Sunday and eat, you know, two family size pizza hut pizzas, three or four bars of Cadbury's chocolates, two, or three big large bottles of Coca-Cola just to make myself feel good from the damage I did the night before. And of course, wow. this would then start a vicious circle with the sugar, fat and salt. And because you're working hard, you know, it's just, it, it's just the story of so many people that I had my priorities all out of whack. Now, when you're young and you're strong and you're fit and you're healthy, you kind of think that all of those problems that you hear about, you know, the heart attacks, the cancers, the diseases, all of those things, mm -hmm. well, they happen to somebody else, they don't happen to you. And you kind of have this invincibility sort of uh, feeling. And I had that. I was definitely guilty of that. And as I went through my 20s, I was still infallible. I was able to do all of that garbage eating. I was able to do all of that drinking. I was able to smoke. I was able to do all those things. And I was still able to get up the next day and run five miles or play competitive sports and et cetera, et cetera. Well, then in my early 30s, I woke up one day and I was broken. I went from being whole and what I would call healthy to being broken, where I had this autoimmune disease that um, the doctor said after a few months of going back and forth and doing all of the, the rigmarole, they said, you're going to be on these pills for life. I'm like only 32. And I'm thinking, what? what the hell? You know, 
Now, at that time, I was super busy with work and trying to build my inverted commas empire in my world. And uh, I sort of didn't address this issue. I just thought, you know, I'll take the pills and I'll get I'll get back to that problem later. Well, it wasn't until my 40th birthday, so eight years later, but that I finally said, enough's enough. Wow. Enough of taking these pills, morning, lunch, and night. Enough of my life being interrupted beyond anything you could possibly worse, wish on your worst enemy. I had a thing called chronic urticaria angioedema, which, Jillian, is another really fancy way of saying chronic hives that would swell underneath my skin. And it would happen from physical pressure. So let's say I came over and met you and you shook my hand. If you shook my hand with a firm grip, maybe an hour later, my hand would swell up as though it was caught in a car door. Wow. I couldn't I couldn't help you bring your groceries in. If uh, someone wanted me to hold their baby, I wasn't able to do it. Picking luggage up off the carousel, I always needed someone to help me. I wasn't able to do anything with, with touch. Playing golf, tennis, lifting weights, even walking was a struggle. Could never walk on sand, for example. Could not go to the beach. The unevenness of the wow. sand on my feet. So this was a, a disease of touch. And I felt like I was getting more withdrawn from the world. And the more withdrawn I got, the more, I won't say the word depressed because I'm, I'm a very optimistic person, but the more angry I got, the more, the more frustrated I got. And so on my 40th birthday, I um, had a big night and uh, with a whole bunch <laughs> of mates. And I woke up and there I was <laughs> with this massive hangover uh, going to the medicine cabinet yet again for the ritual of taking all those pills. And I thought, I looked in the mirror and I thought, you know, you're an idiot. You are a, you're a, you're a fool. You're now 40. You've had this problem for eight years. Clearly your body is trying to tell you something. A am I doing all mm -hmm. I can to help my body heal? Or am I, am I an impediment? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I don't know what it was about that moment, Julian. I don't. I don't know how or why that was like. And as Oprah would say, the aha moment. Okay. Yeah. But, but that was it, and it was um, the the day after my fortieth birthday. So I basically thought, okay, I've got to put a plan in place, and I've got to stop procrastinating. I've got to. I've got to really do something. So I I started to investigate a whole a whole sort of host of of ways that I could possibly eat some certain foods or drop this out or stop doing that or do this and this diet, that diet. And really what it came down to is I was, was told by Professor Ron Penny, who's passed on now, he's actually in Fat Sick and Nearly Dead. He said to me, mm -hmm. he said, you know, 80% of all disease is caused by lifestyle choices. 80%. Mm -hmm. Just wow. think about that for one minute, right? So 80% of all the pain, all the misery, all the problems, all the going to the doctors, all the going to the, the drug stores, all the costs, all of that is caused by ourselves, by our own choices. What we eat, how much movement we do, what's our sleep like, what's the relationship between ourselves and others, uh, where we live. Uh, these things are all lifestyle choices that I started to, to look at. And I thought, well, hold on. I don't know whether my disease whether I, if I'd been Captain Perfect, would I still be sick, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't know. Like, yeah. how, how do you know, right? No one can tell you. No yeah. doctor, no test, no nothing. So it came down to, well, why don't I put a plan together? Why don't I, why don't I reverse what I've done? In other words, on a, on a, on a spiritual level, on a, on, a, on a big picture level, I had effectively turned my back on Mother Nature. I, mm -hmm. had, I had basically given Mother Nature the bird, right? Mm -hmm. And said, yeah, exactly. I'm out of here. I'm going to go and eat all this food made by people in white coats. Yeah. And then I ended up seeing a lot of people in white coats. Right? Yeah, right. So, so this, this concept of go back to mm -hmm. the past, go back to what we're supposed to do and why do we see in colour we see in colour not because of TV. We see in colour because of the fruits, vegetables that are out there on all those plants. So we can identify the purples, the reds, the mm -hmm. oranges, the yellows, the greens. So I said, you know what? 
I've done 40 years of smashing myself. What if I did two years of just eating plants? What if I just ate fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, and seeds? And, you know, not raw, but <clears throat> I just went back to basics. And then I thought, what if I juiced for the first 60 days of that two years? What if I supercharged mm -hmm. my journey? And so then when I once I decided on this plan, a mate of mine said, you know, Jay, you should put a camera on yourself because you're the least likely person to do this kind of thing. Like, I mean, you are this business guy, you know, in financial services, in investment banking, you're like the least likely person to be standing on your head drinking green juice, right? Mm -hmm. From there, we ended up getting a camera crew. Uh, that pushed my timeline to when I wanted to start to when I was 41. So I actually, it took wow. a year to get this organized. Wow. What I just what I just explained to you didn't come to me, you know, the the clouds didn't part and open up and it took some time yeah. to get my head around and also commit to 2 years. You know, cuz why 2 years? Well, it was just a random but I mean I was thinking 6 months, I was thinking a year, I was, you know, but I figured that I'd done so much of the crime, I needed to do a bit more of the time, you know. Mm -hmm. So in October of 2007, which is 15 years ago, right? Wow. I'm, 50, I'm 56 today, but I was 41 when I started. And I kicked off in New York City, my 60 days and the beginning of my two years. So in the movie, it gets lost because you can't put everything into a film. You get yeah. you, you uh, people too much information. It gets lost in the movie that I was going to try and do two years of plants because it more became about the juicing. And the reason for that was is because five months later, right, after starting, so two months of the juice and then three months mm -hmm. of the eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, beans, and seeds, I was off all medication. Wow. It was completely um, clear and clean of everything and had no problems. And I've been that way ever since. In fact, I don't take any medication on a long-term basis. I don't take blood pressure. I don't take cholesterol. I don't take, I don't take any tablets. I, I, unfortunately, I try to stay away from antibiotics as best as possible. Mm -hmm. But, and I was only talking to a doctor about this yesterday. For some reason, since I got COVID, and I don't know whether this is something that other people have, have experienced, but since I got COVID, I've been more susceptible to getting the flu than I have ever in my since 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 I did that journey. So you used to be able to I used to be able to say if we were doing this podcast 12 months ago, mm -hmm. I could say to you that in 15 years, or I'd be saying in 14 years, that I only had one or two courses of antibiotics because of tooth infections during that whole time. But otherwise I never got sick. Mm -hmm. And I never had a relapse and completely all good. I got COVID in January this year and I've had the flu three times this year. Now mm -hmm. I have been traveling a lot. I've been on the road a lot. I'm back to the world that I was where I'm, you know, moving around and I'm exposed to a lot of things more so than I was before, but I used to do that before and I never got sick. So yeah. the point I was making was, is that I'm generally pill free after mm -hmm. relying on them for eight years. So as far as, uh, what happens next is this film. I won't ruin it for those who haven't watched it. Anyone can watch Fat Sick and Nearly Dead on, mm -hmm. on nearly all channels. I took it off Netflix, but it's on Apple. It's on Amazon. It's on it's on my website. I'll link it below. Yeah. It, it, it's on rebootwithjoe.com and it's free. So you can watch it. But the film becomes rated one of the top 10 inspirational documentary films of all time. Because in this journey, it's not so much about, you know, Joe. It's about what happens to Phil our hero in the film, who's a truck driver who follows me in what I've done. And so this film becomes a whole thing unto itself, which, which you know, I, I only did the, the movie basically to sort of show others that maybe this will work. I had no idea if it was going to work. Remember, at the beginning, I have no idea. It turns yeah. out it does work. It turns yeah. out people want to watch it. It turns out that millions of people around the world, I think like 30 or 40 million people have watched this film, which is kind of crazy. Crazy, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I still forget that I made the movie and I'm, you know, like the other day I was at the airport, this fella came up to me and said, you completely changed my life. And I'm, I don't know why he's coming up to me in the first place. Cause I forget who that I've done that, you know, yeah. I'm, 
I've moved on to my, I'm just doing other stuff in my life. Yeah. And well, it was such doing... a big thing. I feel like you really changed things in the juicing world and you've helped so many people. And I'm wondering, did you expect the movie to be so big like this? And how did that feel? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, no expectation whatsoever. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly, mm -hmm. see, I started this journey in 2006. Like, remember, Netflix was red envelopes back then. There was no streaming. Mm -hmm. like, like, the time that I did this movie, The Secret was on DVD. Mm -hmm. I did all of my thinking and planning for this movie that it would be on DVD and it might be sold in health clubs and yoga shops. Seriously. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. The fact that it came out when streaming was so big really was the the power of the just lucky with timing, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't expect it. In fact, what's, what's ended up happening is that my whole life has changed because of this pivot. Like I was in financial services. I was in the world of, of of investments and then all of a sudden this happens and then I get dragged into this world of health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, I don't, I don't use the word dragged in like negatively. I just mm -hmm. say I was whisked away, right? You know, in the, in the currents. Yeah. And, and very fortunately, the movie had such a great impact on so many people that then there started to be this tribe and the reboot with Joe community and the Joe Cross community. And now I have a team that we we do a newsletter. We've gone on to create the Nama Juicer with um, Dan Sheehan, who's the founder. And Dan and I got together. And Dan has that expertise and experience of how to bring a machine to life, how to design, how to do that. And I have the And community. even I have to interrupt because I just got mine. Even the design of the box. Yeah. The, I, I designed totes a few years ago. It reminds me exactly of those. But it's so amazing. Well, good Isn't job. Isn't it beautiful? It's I beautiful. love it. Yeah. yeah like you don't see that, you know, you can tell you guys put a lot of love into the product. Yeah, I'm very it's proud. It's a very special machine. I'm very proud of it. Uh, and you know, the team at Nama, I mean, there's the, it's just, it was a great fit. My community with passionate uh, people who want to spread the word. So that's been a great success. And I'm very proud of the reboot with Joe team. I'm very proud of the Nama team. I'm very proud of what we've been able to achieve. I noticed You've had some people on your channel that have been doing long juice fasts that have oh, been yeah. inspired by, by um, the film. Yeah, absolutely. And they also use an to do it, which is great. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, look, everywhere I go, I'm just blessed that, uh, that I've been fortunate enough to have a platform to be able to share a story that's inspired others and made their lives uh, better for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. And do you feel like maybe you have some more purpose in this? Like, does it feel more purpose driven compared to how you felt in finance? Or it's sort of like oh, where you're meant to be? Night and day. Of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I think that everybody needs to find out what they're most useful at. Because I believe mm -hmm. that if you find out what you're most useful at and do that, you'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And I think that what I'm very useful at is telling stories and people like hearing stories from me. I don't know why, but somehow, some way, if we go back maybe 20,000 years, I'd be the guy around the fire <laughs> at night telling the, the recanting the story of what happened when we took down the mammoth, even though I might not have been the guy <laughs> yeah. who heard it. Right. And, and so I can tell a joke. I have thousands of jokes that jokes just, I, I, I always remember them. I don't know why, but, so all that juicing, I, that's why you remember them. Pardon? All that juicing helps yeah, you remember that's right. them. I, I have a yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I I enjoy making people smile. I enjoy making people laugh. I enjoy entertaining people. So the platform of making a film delivers all of that. Mm -hmm. When you're in the world of finance, it's a very it's a world where you're only useful to a small portion at a time, at least of what I used to do. Now, yes, you can take the the resources, which is the money, out of that world. I mean, I would not have been able to make mm -hmm. this movie unless I put my own money up to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So, so there's uh, I'm not critical of that world. I was very good at it, and I'm that's something that I'm blessed that I was good with maths. But uh, and you needed to be able to tell stories as well in that world to be able to sell. So True. that was beneficial. But at the end of the day, I, I wouldn't go back in time. I mean, you know that. When you change course and you're 41, it's a scary thing, right? It's not something that you plan. I didn't plan it. 
and and the amount of money I invested and kept investing, you know, four or five years in, I was in with a lot and there wasn't much to show for it. But I kind of believe that as long as I kept doing this, eventually the payback would come. Mm-hmm. And it and, has. Uh, and so, you know, you just got to have that self-belief. And I'm wondering, where do you think you would be right now had you not started that juice cleanse? That's a good question. I, well, I certainly, I certainly don't think that it's hard to tell, but I think there's a possibility that I may not even be here. Mm -hmm. Like I was on a trajectory of pretty, you know, like taking all those steroids. If I, if I'd been taking the amount of steroids that I was taking, which is 60 milligrams a day, I'd probably have osteoporosis today. I'd probably have moon face. I'd probably have some scoliosis and hunchback issues because these are the side effects of this drug. I would probably have diabetes. I'd have a whole bunch, a whole host of issues that would be the flow on from the medication. And then if I really didn't, you know, stop and get sick, that's where I might have continued on this path of damaging myself where it wouldn't have been an autoimmune disease. It might've been a heart attack or a stroke or mm -hmm. cancer. Mm -hmm. So now having said all of that, I know some really healthy people that get diagnosed with cancer or leukemia or have a stroke or have a heart attack. So mm -hmm. we can't put all of these diseases into the category of lifestyle. Remember it's 80, 20. So, you know, one in five people, right. Or one in five, uh, people's issues are just genetics and bad luck, right? Mm -hmm. It's not anything to do with their lifestyle. So I'm always careful that I don't think because I have a much better lifestyle now that I'm not invincible, that I couldn't, you know, have one of those issues that might just be there anyway, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just take each day as it comes. The older you get, the more exposed you are to your friendships at your age, where more problems come. Mm -hmm. So, so like 20 years ago, I wasn't having conversations with friends who are telling me that they've been diagnosed with terminal this, or they've only mm -hmm. got to go. And you, you don't, you don't have, I mean, you, you do, but you don't have as many conversations when you're in your thirties as you do in your fifties, or as I will when I'm in my seventies. And that's just part of life, right? That's part of as we as we get older. But I do believe, and I really believe this, that if you if you take the effort, take the time to just change small things in your life, like you've got the beautiful green juice there in front of you. If you mm -hmm. just add one of those to your day, just add one per day, and that you do that for five years. That is a significant difference in the amount of phytonutrients you've taken in over a five-year period. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the difference between doing it and not doing it is monumental in terms of how much live nutrition is going into your body. That doesn't mean that those people might not have a salad tonight, but you know the amount of nutrition, and I'm talking about micronutrients, not macro, not, not the protein, fat, and carb, I'm talking about the micronutrients, which is what so many people are missing. You're supercharging your whole system with an incredible, like tens of thousands of different compounds that we need for ourselves to function properly. We don't, you don't need that juice there, Julian, to actually go and run a mile or get through your day. You could not have that juice and you will still function through your whole day, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what will happen is, is that by putting that nutrition into your body, the communication systems light up and the cellular structure is enhanced so that there is less likely issues of things going wrong. Mm -hmm. Your microbiome is plenished and given strength. So there's, there's just so many things that just one large glass of green juice so true. As long as you mix it up into different four or five different types of veggies and fruits will do. It's like you're mad not to. You're mm -hmm. just mad not to. Yeah. And also you can make it taste great. It like tastes great. Can. Even when not... I make this for people who eat like the standard American diet, they're like, wow, that actually tastes great. And it just, it does so much for you. It, I, nothing makes me feel better than green juice. Like that's yeah. a fact. Nothing. Yeah.
Well, I'm wondering how has your lifestyle been over the years since the film? Like, how has your diet been? Have you played around with different diets to see maybe if you can get away with other things and like, or incorporated animal products, or have you stayed raw? How has it been? And what do you typically eat in a day now? I know some of my viewers were asking that. Sure. So I, I have definitely played around. I was vegan, uh, not raw. As I said, I was mm -hmm. never the raw, but I was yeah. vegan certainly for for that uh, five months. And then it was probably another three months. So call it eight months. And then I started to become pescatarian. So I incorporated fish. And that's how I lived basically for about six years. Wow. So I was six years, uh, no alcohol, no sodas, basically green juice or, or vegetable and fresh fruit juice. So any combinations that produced colors that were the orange color, the purple color, the red, yellow, green colors. Mm -hmm. I was very, very, still am wanting to make sure I get lots of different colors of the rainbow into my diet. Mm -hmm. And then I started to go into uh, red meat I after six years. Not so much, but I would have it. And still no sodas, no alcohol, no cigarettes, nothing like that. My biggest struggle, and I talk about this a lot, is sugar. Sugar's my my problem. I'm I'm very good at at uh, eating healthy food. I I don't eat junk food. I'm not a I'm not a junk food person anymore. That used to be the old joke. Of course, there are times the eighty twenty rule. It's probably ninety ten for me more. If it's ten percent of the time, I might go out and do you know like a, I'll do a burger in a restaurant or I'll do homemade pizzas. I don't go to the to the chains and eat that pizza. That's not what I do. But if I'm in Italy and I'm in a restaurant, yeah. I'll have, you know, the truffle pizza. But this, these are not a problem for me. My biggest issue is sugar. So my biggest hurdle, if you like, or challenge is managing my sugar cravings. So mm -hmm. things like chocolate, I love. Even, even my healthy cacao smoothies mm -hmm. that have, you know, uh, dates and bananas and yeah. honey. There's still an enormous amount of sugar in those smoothies, yeah. so I'm I'm more of a uh, of a of a sugar sweet than I am. So, is my diet perfect? Absolutely not. I mm -hmm. actually don't know too many people's diets that are personally, yeah. but I'm I'm not perfect. I don't ascribe to be. I don't think of food as being good or bad for me. That's good. I think that's very dangerous. Yeah. I, I'm also. A am I happy? With my health, I would like to be some pounds lighter. It would be better on my knees. My sleep is good. I don't have any blood pressure or diabetes or any um, cholesterol issues. So I'm happy with that at 56. But, you know, we can always do more fitness. We can always improve ourselves. But, you know, you've got to be kind to yourself as well. Mm -hmm, 100%. And I'm wondering, so with the juice cleanse, if you were just, you learned so much from your juice cleanse and all over the years and like you're a juicing expert. So if you were just getting started now, is there anything you would do different? Or do, maybe do you have some tips for somebody watching who's never done one and they're feeling inspired by you to perhaps start a juice fast or a juice cleanse? Yeah, that's a good question, Julian. I, I think that the, probably the biggest difference I would, I would say now would be that adding protein, some kind of a protein powder mm -hmm. to a juice cleanse that goes more than 15 days is something that I would, I would probably encourage. So knowing what I know now, you know, after day 15, I probably would have added some pea protein, something to my juice. Okay. We have found that during prolonged fasts, particularly women can start losing hair mm -hmm. um, if they haven't had some protein and mm -hmm. in their juices. Uh, so I think that's interesting. Yeah, me too. I don't think I would change the length of time. You know, I think that uh, that's what I needed to do. But I was, I'd done the crime. I don't think mm -hmm. everybody needs to do what I did. Everyone has to sort of tailor what works for themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, what else have I learned in juice fasting? I think probably shorter and more regular is mm -hmm. good. You know, if I went through a stage there where I was doing five days, eight times a year. So I was still doing 40 days in total in a year, but I was doing mm -hmm. it five days, eight times. And I found that really powerful. You know, I just did a 25-day juice fast in uh, 
in September, in August of this year. And that was great. You know, mm -hmm. as I said, I had the flu in July and I was still coming off with some of the, the, the remnants of it and doing the juice fast just kicked me into a whole new level. Mm -hmm. and felt great. You know, the older we get, there's more wear and tear on joints. And I seem to, I'm, I'm a bit bow-legged. I don't know if you know what that means, but that means you, the structure of the legs are a bit of a shape like this. Mm -hmm. So I have more pressure on the inside of my knees than I do on the outside. And so you tend to get a little bit of pain and arthritis in your knee. Mm -hmm. There is an operation you can do to straighten them out, but uh, I, I've stayed yeah. away from that. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you. And, and so when I'm on a juice fast, I have absolutely no, like I feel like I'm 21 or 22 when I'm walking up and down stairs. Yeah. When I'm not on a juice fast, I know I'm walking up and down stairs. Yeah. It's unreal so, though, right? It's unreal what the juicing can do for us. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the double-edged sword, right? It's doing two things. First of all, it's taking away anything that's acidic that's in our diet. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's adding in just the, like we talked about earlier, this information and this really, I think that for me, what it's the, it's the double edge it's taking out and it's what it puts in. And, and that, that sort of swing is so dramatic mm -hmm. that you feel such a difference. Mm -hmm. Sleep is so much better. Sleep, like I recently did, so I did 14 days and then 10 days. And that was one of my favorite parts. You know, I went into it to like fix some stuff. And fortunately it did. My gut was right, it would. But then my favorite part was the dreams were so vivid. And it was almost like I was having signs in my dreams. Like it was, I couldn't wait to go to sleep to have dreams on the juice cleanse and my the mental clarity. Did you find that? Do you find that when you do juice cleanses? Yeah, my look, mind is just so quiet. That is very, very common. And yeah. I, out of all the people that I speak to, that's one of the most common things is that you're able to remember dreams and they feel much more alive. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's more this meaningful. Insight. There's an enlightenment that's going on. Re remember, you're you're tricking your body because what you're drinking right there now is 99.999% water. Mm -hmm. like, like That's what you're drinking. You're mm -hmm. drinking water that has nutrition in it. it it's mm -hmm. true vitamin water, right? And the, 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 the volume of micronutrients versus the water is very small. So... When you are putting it in your body, you're almost tricking your body that you're on a water fast. Mm -hmm. Now, the sugars actually create a reaction from the hormones, uh, insulin, et cetera. So it's not the same as water fasting. I don't want to yeah. make it, I don't want to give people that it's the same, but it's damn close. Mm -hmm. And so while you don't get all of the benefits that you would get out of water fasting, you get other benefits that you don't get in water fasting. You get more energy. You get the ability to go longer. You get similar feelings of enlightenment, spiritual closeness, mm -hmm. calmness. A lot of men I talk to really feel that they get in touch with their uh, center. They're, they're less aggressive. Mm -hmm. They're less angry. Mm -hmm. uh, road rage drops mm -hmm. um, i believe I noticed, it i noticed that on my journey me too with day, going raw yeah day 45 people would cut me off say six six weeks earlier i'd be screaming yeah on day 45 i'm saying come on in brother come on in <laughs> right so uh, it's it's a now uh sexual uh behavior or, or um habits change as well mm -hmm. like on a water fast or a juice fast a lot of men uh, have a lower libido Mm -hmm. But because if you think about it, this would have been a time when there's not a lot of food around. So it's not a great time to procreate in terms of our history mm -hmm. of the way that the, 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 the chemicals in the brain are working, right? So they share with me that they're not feeling as active as they'd like to be, right? And now what happens is once they go off the juice fast and they start eating yeah. healthy, well, they report back to me a far better <laughs> sex life and, yeah, wow. and much, much more frequency and sustainability. Wow. So, you know, it's it's a subject that a lot of men have problems with. You know, there's there's medications 
that we all know about. You see the advertisements on television. You know, I've never, ever had to get assistance in this mm-hmm. department ever, mm-hmm. right? But I've got a lot of friends of my age that need a tablet to be able to be active. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, man, just go and do 30 days of juicing and see what happens. <laughs> Yeah. When you finish that, because you're not going to need it, you're not going to need a little blue pill. Yeah. So there's just so many things that tie in through your whole mechanism of your of your system that you can allow the body to heal. Because that's mm-hmm. really what you're doing is you're allowing the body to self heal. And the body is really good at it as long as we get out of the way. Yeah. And it's nice you can, like with the juicing. I haven't done a water fast. I want to do one one day when my kids are older. But what's nice with the juicing is if you're drinking enough calories, you still have so much energy and can function and do everything, right? Like I usually juice now. What my new thing is I juice all morning until the early afternoon and I juice till like two and then I have my food and it's I have more energy than ever when I'm juicing, right? You're functional. So I think there's a time and place for a water fast maybe for some people and I get how they like it. But the juicing to me is just much more like realistic because you don't have to take a time out from society really. You know what I mean? Sure. Well, if, well, Thanksgiving is a great time. I know there's Canadian Thanksgiving and there's American Thanksgiving, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. People tend to want to have a sleep after their lunch. Mm-hmm. You know, they eat so much food. They're not they're not used to eating so much at a, during the day on on a Thanksgiving day. So why is it that they've gone to sleep? Now, people talk about the chemical in the turkey, but for mine, a lot of people who eat too much always feel sleepy because in order for that digestion to take place, that's an enormous amount of blood yeah. needs to be centered in the abdominal region to be able to digest the food. Yeah. So yeah. you're taking blood away from other parts of the body and you it's like, well, we're now we're going into the sleep mode. So the fact that you're not diverting blood during your day to digestion, the fact that you're juicing right up until two o'clock there is energy to be gone everywhere. Yeah. You right. I mean, Jillian, that's what's that's why you've got so much energy because you're not you're not using it on something you normally would. Yeah, and I feel like I'm more creative. My mind is better. Everything's oh, better. And so I want to ask you, do you have a favorite juice? Yeah, I mean, I look, I change to be yeah. honest. Sometimes it's seasonal. Like in summer, I love watermelon, pineapple, and ginger. It's one of my favorite juices. But I find I'm more active in summer. I'm doing more things. So going down to the beach, I'm going for a walk, I'm going for a swim, I'm I'm, yeah. doing, I'm playing golf. So, you know, if I'm on the golf course, I love taking two uh, big bottles, uh, you know, in the, in the thermostat that keeps them cold of watermelon, pineapple and ginger. I mean, nothing mm-hmm. better. I mean, that you know, sounds you, good. Someone said, have a beer. I go, no, nah, mate, I'm sweet. I've got my juice, you know? Yeah. Uh, if I'm if I was sitting here now, it's fall uh, where I'm in Los Angeles, and as as I as I would have loved to have done, I had just two busy calls this morning. But my plan was to go to Irwan and get a green juice for our for our call. Mm-hmm. So I will do that later this morning. Mm-hmm. And the juice that I will get is I love any juice that's all greens, but I love I love something because I got the sweet tooth. Mm-hmm. I like pineapple or I like watermelon in that. Uh, sorry, or uh, apple in the juice, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I like to have something, but it's it doesn't have to be much. It's just just fifteen to twenty percent is plenty mm-hmm. of sweetness in that. I uh, I can I drink greens? Yes, I can. Do I like it as much? I'll be honest, I don't. I I like it with a bit of uh, of sweetness in it. So just one apple is enough for me mm-hmm. if, I, if I'm making a, a juice for myself. So. Mm-hmm. But but it, it changes. It really does change. So they're my two favorites. I used to really love the sweet potato, believe it or not. So mm. I would use sweet wow. potato, yeah, sweet potato, carrots, and bell peppers. Mm. And and that's a great winter juice, for example. Uh, okay. And very few people know you can juice sweet potatoes. I tried once and I didn't like it, but I think I just tried the sweet potato on its own. And, oh, yeah, no, <laughs> and no. I was like, this is just terrible. And I never tried again. Yeah, no, you you put carrot with it because they're the same color. Yeah, it actually helps a tremendous amount. You'll 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 be shocked at how powerful lemon is to offset anything. It's it uh, is, yeah, a great alkalizer. It's in here, and that's one nice thing with the Nama. You guys include that recipe book, which is awesome. 
Yeah. And I want to ask, okay, did you remove mucoid plaque on your 60 days? And do you think it is real? I know that's a real hot topic in the juicing community. You're talking about plaque in on in, in the arteries? Yeah, because you know a lot of people say they remove that long, hard mucoid plaque when they do a juice cleanse that lines our colon and they say that's the only way to remove it is the juice fast. Or did you remember removing like any old plaque or any parasites or like anything crazy? Uh -huh. Okay, so we're getting into detail here. Or you no. don't have to share if you don't want no, to. No, 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 no. There's look. <laughs> I, I'll be honest, I wasn't looking at the number two material as much as I was looking at what was coming out of my mouth. And what came out of my mouth was very interesting, right? So I it was about, I'm, I've got to remember now exactly what day this was. And I think it was like in the 20s on my journey. Yeah. And, and I, I basically had to cough up this huge mucus ball. And wow. it was, it was, it was, I'm not, I mean, I don't want to put the viewers off, but it was in, it, it was taking up the whole of my cup of my hand. Right. And it wow. was, in one, it was in one piece. Wow. And so that came from my digestive tract. Unreal. It was like day 24 or something. So I was thinking at the time, imagine if I stopped juicing at day 21, that still would be there. Yeah. Right. right? So it, a lot uh, on the number two, I didn't do a lot of looking. There wasn't a lot of solid number two as you get into it. It became very watery and very, there were stages of, of, of solid stools, but in a long juice fast of 60 days, you're not getting a lot of solid material. You're getting a lot of liquid. And so I don't know if any parasites came out. I don't mm -hmm. know. I do know that on day 60, I didn't want to stop. I had to stop because I had a film crew and we'd agreed on this. But, you know, had I had I not been doing a movie, I'm pretty sure I probably would have gone 100 days. Yeah. I felt so good. I felt absolutely like nothing could stop me. Mm -hmm. And compared to how I felt the first 10 days, the last 10 days was truly you know, probably up there with the 10 best days of my life. Wow. Unbelievable. So the longer you go, the uh -huh. more enlightenment, the more spirit, the more purpose, the more gratefulness you receive. Mm -hmm. it, it's difficult to put into words, but I use the analogy of being on the tall mountain and you can just see. Now, once you start eating food again and, and rejoining society, your elevation drops. Mm -hmm. You get more you're, grounded. Yeah. You're back. Well, you're back down in the in the in the everyday life. But <laughs> yeah. You you can rise above and be close to uh, close to the heavens yeah. when you you take a long journey like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's incredible. It's truly incredible. It's I say like well, I did 37 days once, and it was the best 37 days of my life. I never feel better than when I'm juicing. Yeah. It's just like it's unreal. Okay, so I'll ask you a couple of viewers' questions if you have time. You bet. Yeah, just a couple. So, okay, the sun said, how many days on juice fasting until you're not passing any more stools? But that probably depends on each person, right? Well, I think you're always going to pass stools. That's the point. Yeah. Because you are breaking down waste. So so let's be clear, you are digesting energy and mm -hmm. that is cellular structure that we call fat. And depending on on uh, protein as well, if you've got a lot of protein to give up, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of your muscle mass. So you are you are breaking down structure and you are converting that into energy and you you do have material to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have as much, but you have some. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the next question they said, how do you how does one stay committed to a juice fast even when not motivated? I think that's a great question. Well, it's impossible to do anything when you're not motivated. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you just think about anything. Like mm -hmm. I think people hate being told what to do. Like, I, I don't know anyone. It's nature. Who, it's human nature, I think. I don't know anyone who says, you know what, Joe? I love being told what to do. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I don't know anyone like that, right? People inherently need to find that purpose internally. Mm -hmm. They need to they need to really want it and they need to work on themselves to get to a position, not dive into the juicing. It's a much more of a mental game to say, all right, I want to do a long juice fast. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to start in eight weeks. What am I going to do? I'm going to do one day for the next three weeks where I'm going to just juice a whole day and nothing else. I'm going to prove to myself I can do a day. So maybe for like three weeks, they're doing just a day a week. Mm -hmm. I've got this. I can do this. Maybe the next week they're going to say, right, well, I'm going to do two days a week and then one more day a week. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to go from one to three, but I'm still going to eat four times. I'm still going to be eating more. Mm -hmm. And so they slowly build the confidence that they're able to achieve something. Now it's a case of stringing it together Mm -hmm. and realizing that once they get past day five, six, seven, that they are now got the wind at their back. It's not, they're not, they're not into the wind, you know, mm-hmm. the expression of, of having assistance or, or, or um, friction. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's how I would do it. And I also encourage people to use their phones and the way they can use their phones is they can do a message to themselves about why they're doing this fast and messages to not give up. So that when you want to give up and you're struggling, you go back and you look at the video of yourself because there's no one else telling you, it's yourself telling you. And having this personal conversation with yourself Mm -hmm. is very powerful. And you need to articulate why you want to do it, how you feel. And that can take you back to, I need to get over this. I need to to, to push forward. Mm -hmm. So that's that's also very powerful. I love that. That's good for anything. That's a really, really good one. Okay. So the next one said, how, this is a great question. I don't think I asked you this, but how long before he was actually able to see and feel the changes? I can't remember if we talked about exactly how long. So I think for me, it was, it was about 10 to 12 days in Wow. before I really felt this was that I was onto something. Yeah. Uh, First five days, I felt like a truck had run over me. I wanted to give up like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. I, really, I, I didn't know how I was going to handle 55 more days like this. because It you, probably you, helped having the film crew then where, well, with you then, big, right? Big help. Yeah. But, but I also knew that this was my last chance too. So mm-hmm. I, I like to think that if the film crew wasn't there, I still would have done it because this was my last chance. True, I, that's right. I'd psychologically built. When I say I wanted to give up, I was never like, I'm giving up. But the conversations in my head were, I don't know if I can do this, you know, Mm -hmm. because the first, it's like anything, the beginning is always the toughest, you know, Mm -hmm. in the journey of, of endurance. And this Mm -hmm. is an endurance event. Make no mistake. You are programmed to eat. Everything about you is smell, sight, feel. Everything is programmed for you to get food into your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, and just as well, because if it wasn't, you'd be dead because you'd forget to eat, right? Mm-hmm. So to me, it's about overcoming all of those signals. I mean, I'm driving across the country and i got the film crew going into Mexican restaurants and having incredible mo- meals in, mm-hmm. you know, Arizona. And they're coming out and I can smell everything on their breath mm-hmm. from the meal because when you are at that level, you are hypersensitive. Because once again, this is nature mm-hmm. providing you the tools that when you are in famine to find food. So you're actually more heightened to to everything around you, which goes to that enlightenment. So yeah, it's not easy, but yeah. you know, it's worth I'm, it. I'm blessed that I was able to achieve it and blessed that I was able to capture it and share it with others. Yeah, it's changed your life and so many others' lives and my life as well. I've watched your documentary so many times and I want to thank you for coming on. It's been so awesome talking to you and I'm wondering if there's anything you feel called to end off with, maybe some inspiring words for somebody out there who might not be facing the best health and they might want to change, but they have a hard time like taking the steps to do that juice cleanse or take those healthy habits on. And also, if you could let everybody know where to find you as well, that would be awesome. Sure, Jillian. Uh, Look, I think... I think that one of the greatest things that you can do as an individual, as anybody can do, is to love themselves a little bit more, to get to be kinder to themselves, to be more supportive of yourself. And there are lots of ways to do that. And one of the most effective ways that I have found for people to 
to build up their strength, their self-esteem, to get themselves feeling more confident because the more you love yourself, the more the stronger you are, mm-hmm. the more you're going to present to others and you're going to welcome that kind of love and that kind of strength into your life. So this this is not just about health. This is everything in your life. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, reach out to two, three, four, five, whatever you've got in your life that people who care about you, reach out to them and ask them to write five, six, seven, eight, ten things that they really respect or love about you and ask them to send it to you in a text message or an email or jot them down over the phone, but ask them to be honest and then get the post-it notes and write each one of them and stick it up on the mirror in your bathroom so that in the mornings, that first conversation you have when you are standing there in your birthday suit, it's not, oh my God, look how fat and ugly and, Mm -hmm. you know, terrible you are. It's like you see honest, you see trustworthy, you see funny, you see beautiful, you see caring, you see these words that real people feel about you. And this is a powerful way to start your day mentally accepting that and feeling that love and then believing it yourself and going out there and saying those things. And so that then is going to allow you to go downstairs, get your Nama out and make that green juice because you now are accepting the love you want. Whereas if you have had a depressing start to the day by looking at yourself in the mirror, you're going to come downstairs and you might want to say, I'm doing the bagel and cream cheese. I'm doing the donut. I'm doing the the, the mm-hmm. triple, triple latte <laughs> wow. with sugar. Mm-hmm. because I'm not worthy. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just going to damage myself more because mm-hmm. I'm punishing. So I think that that's, that's the message. If you just take one thing from this conversation would be to be kinder, mm-hmm. be more loving to yourself because I have found that by doing that, my life is far better and uh, I, I have a great life. I work hard. I am, am very fortunate, but I also know that Lady Luck follows a person of action. Mm-hmm. And so the more you can do, the more you can get yourself into position of being lucky. Mm-hmm. So you can, find, you can find me on rebootwithjoe.com. I'm at Joe the Juicer on Instagram and Twitter. I don't do much of that Twitter, but I do Instagram a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook, there's so many imposters of me. So Really? Wow. So many just... I'm not chatting to anybody. I'm not dating anybody. Like just stay away from all those, <laughs> right. all those fake Joe crosses. But that's it. Yeah, that's my um, <laughs> my spiel. It's been great, Gillian, talking to you. I really appreciate it. It's been great. You've blown me away. So many aha moments coming out of you. This was great. I really appreciate it, Joe. Thanks so much. And I know my viewers, you guys, I'm sure you loved it as well. If you did, give it a big thumbs up right now. And make sure to subscribe if you don't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Juice on.